Hey everyone, are you looking for some phonemic awareness or phonics activities to use in your kindergarten, first or second grade classroom? then this is the right video for you. Today I'm gonna to go ahead and share three fun and easy phonemic awareness activities that you can take and use in your classroom right away. My name is Susan Jones and I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends every Thursday and Sunday morning here on YouTube trying to make your teaching lives easier. I try to show up with a quick little video or tip or idea that you can take and use in your primary classrooms and save you a little bit of time. So let's dive into those phonemic awareness activities. While I go over to my computer and get everything ready, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. All right, before I dive into the first phonemic awareness activity, I do wanna answer a couple questions that I get a lot. I previously did a how I teach phonics in a first grade classroom video. It looks like this right here. And I walked through kind of the steps I take every single day, Monday through Friday, as we introduce new phonics skills and phonics patterns in the classroom. So I will go ahead and link that video down in the description box below for you to check out after this video. But in that video, many people asked what scope and sequence I follow. And honestly, that changed depending on the school I was at very slightly. Um, but I do think the best or one of the best scope and sequences you can follow is from Hegarty Phonics and Phonemic Awareness. And so I'll link that down in the description below as well. It is a complete phonemic awareness and phonics curriculum, but if you go on their website, you can download based on your grade level, you can download a scope and sequence for the year. Now I did mention this in the other phonics video too, but if you followed me for a while, you might know that I love reading workshop, I love writing workshop, and I love math workshop. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean any specific person's reading workshop, writing workshop, but I love the layout of it and it just works best management wise for my classroom. That being said, I have always had, while I love reading workshop, I've always had a specific phonics block in my daily schedule while I taught first grade. So in my classroom, we always had at least 15 to 20 minutes each day to explicitly go over different phonemic awareness and phonics skills, and we could actually practice applying them. So that's just a little background about me before I dive into these activities. Activity number one is going to be the explicit teaching of blending and segmenting different sounds. And you're going to do this a couple different ways. So when you want students to go ahead and blend sounds together to make a word, you want them to think about the different word parts that they're listening to and see how they come together to make meaning. And there's a few different ways you can have students practice blending sounds. They can practice blending sounds by blending syllables together. So again, this is explicit teaching. Students would be on the carpet or at their seats, wherever you have them, and you will tell them, okay, we are going to practice blending sounds together to make words. And for the syllables one, you would say, I'm going to give you two different syllables. You are going to put them together to make a word. So if I say table, what word do you hear? And they'll blend it together to say table. You'll say win dough window. They will listen to you do it, they will do it with you, and they will do it on their own. And you will repeat this process maybe five to ten times with different words and different syllables. Now another way you can have students blend sounds is by having them blend the onset and the rhyme of a word. So you might say, okay, boys and girls, today we're going to blend some sounds together. I'm gonna to say the beginning of a word and the end of a word, and you have to blend it together and tell me what word you can make. So you might say, k, at, cat. They would have to do that with you. And then I like to stick with the same beginning sound for a little bit, just so I can have students practice that. So then I might say, k, app, cap, k, all, call. And just like with the blending syllables, they will go ahead, do it with you, practice on their own a few times orally. Lastly, when it comes to blending sounds, you'll want to break it down even further, and you want students to actually blend all of the different phonemes, all of the different sound parts they can hear in a word. So this time you're going to say, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of different sounds, and you're going to blend them together to see if you can make a word. So instead of saying k at and have them blend that, you are going to now say k a and have them blend all three together. You'll say w, i, sh, and have them blend that together. 
So when teaching students to blend sounds together, you want to focus on blending syllables, blending onset and rhyme, and blending all of the separate phonemes. Now it is important to say that in my first grade classroom, I would definitely do all three in one day. I didn't need to break it up as much. Maybe towards the beginning of the year, we focused on the syllable and onset and rhyme a little bit more, but I swear even at the beginning of the year, I would give them some CVC sounds to blend together at least a couple times. This is not something that students need to absolutely master blending syllables or blending onset and rhyme before they can move on to blending all the different phonemes. In fact, they should have practice with all three every time you do this. Now, the second part of this activity is actually phoneme segmentation. So when they are doing phoneme blending, they are taking the separate sounds, blending it together to make a word like they do when they are reading. Now, phoneme segmentation is getting students to look at a larger word and break up the different sounds they hear. And if it's in phonics, they're looking at the different word parts that they can see. But the segmentation portion gets students to see that, you know, each word is made up of all these different sounds. Doing all these types of activities is going to get your students to understand the connections between letters, sounds, print, oral speaking, and all of that good stuff. Now, when you're asking students to orally segment words, you are going to do the same three types of activities. So again, you would explicitly explain, I am going to say a word and I want you to tell me how many syllables or break up the syllables, sorry, that are in the word. So I say table, you'd say table. I've always done the chin drop thing. You can also teach them how there is a vowel in each syllable. There's many different ways you can teach them how to break apart syllables. They can clap it, whatever the plan is. You are going to orally say the word. They will break apart the two syllables. Same with onset and rhyme. You can have students separate the beginning of the word and the end of the word. So I might say, we are going to break apart the word book. What's that sound you hear at the beginning? B. What do you hear at the end? Book. Book. And lastly is to get them to listen to those smaller parts, the individual phonemes. So again, you would have them practice, okay, we heard the word book. Now instead of b, book, let's break it up even further. We have b, u, k. We have the three parts, the beginning, the medial, and the end sound. Now, I hope you're able to see, but it actually takes me a lot longer to explain to you uh, what it sounds like to blend and segment sounds, but actually doing this in the classroom with your students only takes a few minutes, and it's so beneficial. So again, activity number one is just to explicitly practice blending and segmenting different sounds orally with your students each and every day. It only takes a few minutes, and it's going to really help them expand and develop their phonological and phonemic awareness. All right, for activity number two, we are going to move into phonics. So the first blending and segmenting sounds orally is phonemic awareness, which falls under phonological awareness. And just to quickly clarify, that is when you are dealing with the sound. So all of that is auditory. It's not necessarily looking at the print of the words just yet. So when we're talking about phonics, now we are connecting those sounds that we hear to actual letters. So in my first grade classroom, we would always do some of those quick phonemic awareness activities so students can practice doing things like blending and segmenting. And I even did another video before, looks like this one, with some rhyming activities, just to get them always practicing that phonological awareness. Now moving into phonics, another activity you can do is word building. Now with word building, you can do this either whole group where you have all the magnets or letter tiles up front and you're getting student input on how to make the word or they're coming up to the board and doing it. And you can also have students do this with their own magnets or magnet tiles, letters, whatever they have at their seats. And in fact, you should do a little bit of both. When you're having students build those words, again, they're making that phonics connection between S makes the S sound. This is what an S looks like. When I put an S here in front of at, it makes the word sat. Just getting them to make all those connections is what is really going to help them with reading later down the line. Now, if you're wondering what words you should have your students build, that is going to completely depend on where you are at in your scope and sequence. But let's pretend you are introducing short U, and let's do say we're doing CVC words with short U. You will want to, when you are building those words, either whole group, small group, whether you're doing it or they're doing it themselves, you will want to have a majority of those short U words be up there, but you also want to spiral in and review some of the other sounds you've already taught. 
So either independently or in a group, you will have students build the word mug. They'll have to go ahead and listen. So here they're doing two things. They have to segment that word mug, phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, separating it into those three parts, and then taking the phonics with it, they have to go ahead and identify what actual letters make those sounds. So it's so simple, but there's actually a lot of great critical thinking and skills happening here where students have to find the M, they push that one up, the U, and then the G to make the word mug. Now you could have students completely clear their board and get ready to build a new word, but instead I think you should absolutely take this opportunity to have students practice phoneme manipulation using things like a word ladder or just getting them to think if they just spelled the word mug, how about the word hug? That way they can actually see, oh, I don't need to take down all three letters, or you can coach them through this. You're, the goal is for them to realize and for them to see that all they need to do is take that M out and put an H up there. Now, just like with the other activities I mentioned earlier, these activities are supposed to be quick. So if you are doing it whole group, you'll probably only do maybe seven to 10 words that you'll want to have students build. Same in small groups or if you're doing it whole group and everyone is at their seats. So to make this a little bit more efficient, you will wanna make sure that students have their own magnet tiles or their own little letter tiles that they're actually physically moving. And you will wanna make sure that they only have maybe 10 to 12 letters, like the letters that they will need to make these words. And if you choose, you know, all five vowels, or you can have all three, three of the vowels that you are reviewing there, and then a bunch of different consonants, you already know as a primary teacher that you can make a ton of different CVC words with those included. When you have a much smaller group of letters for students to actually sort through, that will make things a lot easier for them. Even if they already mentally know that they're looking for an H, it won't take as long for them to find an H. Or if they don't know yet that it's an H, they have less letters to kind of manipulate and figure out the answer. Also, you probably wanna make sure that students have their letter tiles or magnet tiles readily available to save a bunch of time on transitions and getting the materials you need to actually build some words. Now, once students have had that tactile movement of building those words and getting to see those letters, now is when I like to take it to the next level by ramping things up and making it a little bit more fun with their phonics practice. So that's where the next activity comes in. Let's see what it is. Activity number three. All right, activity number three is to have your students play phonics games. Now, that might sound a little vague, but if you've been following me at all, you know I love using purposeful games to help students review skills that they've already been taught. And phonics games are just another fun way to have them practice segmenting sounds, have them practice blending words, have them practice phoneme manipulation, and there are so many fun ways to do just that. A quick Google search or a search on TPT will provide you with a ton of phonics games, but I wanna go ahead and share my print, play, learn, my print and play phonics games that I made a few years ago because I made them very purposefully with many different activities for students to practice all those different things we've been talking about in this video. They will practice listening for sounds either at the beginning, the middle, or at the end of the words. They will practice, you know, phoneme manipulation and figuring out which sound belongs in the middle. They will look at pictures and words and figure out how to either write the word to match the picture or to read and decode the word by blending those sounds together. So I want to show you a couple of these games from my CVC unit and I actually have six different phonics games that are included in the short vowel CVC one and then there's also six games for each of these following skills. I have long vowel CVC E, long vowel teams, R controlled vowels, digraphs, blends, and diphthongs. That way depending on where you are at in your scope and sequence with your students after you have explicitly taught your students what the sounds mean, I will always say that is most important then they can go ahead and review and practice this with some of these games. Now, let me show you an example from my CVC pack. Here's an example of one of the games. It's called Roll, Complete, and Color. You can see it is a two-player game, and this is the main game board, but they also have this little board right here that shows them when they roll that die, which vowel sound coordinates with it. So let's pretend they rolled an A. They will need to look on their column and figure out which word here they can go ahead and put the middle sound in that A, A, to make a word. So let's pretend they fill in this m -ap, map. And then they can color in that map there showing that that one is complete. Students basically go back and forth until somebody fills in their entire column and that person is the winner. 
Now throughout all of the phonics game units, I sometimes have an alternate version to provide a little bit of differentiation. And here is an example of this one right here. So here, Roll Complete and Color is played the exact same way, except as you've probably noticed, many of these words could actually have more than one vowel to complete it to make a word. So for instance, we have k up. It could be cup and they could draw a picture of a cup. It could also be k up. And now this one's going to take a little bit longer for your students to do, but once they roll that vowel, they can practice putting it into each of those words and manipulating those sounds, blending them together to see if it can make a real word. Like I said, I spent a lot of time really focusing on these games and trying to make them as purposeful as possible while allowing students to practice all different types of phonics and phonemic awareness skills at one time. Here's another example of one of the games from my CVC packet. It looks like this and it is called Color It. Essentially up here, all students need is a paper clip and a pencil and they will spin it around to see if they land on I or E. Very simple, they'll take turns doing this and they need to look at the CVC pictures and if they landed on I, they will need to find one with a medial vowel of I, and they will color that in. Students go back and forth until all of the circles are colored, and whoever colors the most in at the end wins the game. Those are just two very simple examples from my CVC unit. If you get the entire bundle that looks like this, there are over 42 different games that your students can play. And just so you know, the Color It one with the IE, this is not, this is one game called Color It, but there is a version that has all of the vowels. So it's not like this is just one game and I and O are completely left out, just so you know. And because you're watching this video today and you made it this far, I do want to let you know that the Roll, Color, and Complete game, both versions, I will totally give you guys for free. I'll leave it linked down in the description so you can try those out with your students. There are many other phonics games out there. Just make sure when you are searching for ones that would work for your class, make sure that it aligns with the phonics skills and patterns that you are teaching in the classroom, or at least review something you already taught. Make sure it's not too advanced for your kids. And also try to assess what skills your students are working on with that game. This way you can make sure it aligns with the skills your students really need to review and practice, and you're not just finding a game that's easy to find on the internet. So there you have three different phonemic awareness and or phonics games that you can practice and take and use in your classroom right away. If you have any questions or wanna see more activities either about just phonemic awareness or phonological awareness, or you wanna see more activities that are more tactile to get students manipulating sounds, you wanna see more games, let me know what you wanna see down in the comments below and I will do my best to make some new videos and new games for you. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of all my new teaching videos. See you in a few days. Bye.